Hello and welcome to my dynamic rope lengthening and shortening pulley system tutorial. You can see the result of this tutorial just like in the video shown. These are hinge joint ropes created in a previous tutorial that I've made called dynamic rope. If you haven't followed that tutorial already, I will be using code and objects from that tutorial. So I suggest you follow that first and then come to this one after. You can access the dynamic rope tutorial in the cards above and also there is a link to it in the description and any other tutorials related to this tutorial series. Okay, first thing we're going to do is create a crank object that is inside the rope here. So I'm just going to right click and create empty and call this crank. I'm just going to add a simple circle sprite onto here so we can see it. So I'm going to just put a sprite renderer and grab my circle. orange and I'm going to just move that up and then I'm going to duplicate this object and call the second one selected and this is just going to be like a little visual indicator to show when we've uh, selected this crank or pulley so I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger so it can show up behind the circle I'm going to make it a yellow and I'm going to increase the sorting layer order for the crank so that that yellow one is behind so basically when you click on the crank this will show up just to make it visibly selected so i'm going to keep that off for now okay back to the crank object we're going to add a circle collider 2d and i've also created a tag called crank and you should do the same and just set this crank to crank that way we will know when it is clicked on, we can check the tag. Okay, now we're going to add the crank script. I've already created the script, but I suggest you go new script and make this crank script and we can go through it together. So whenever I add or remove a rope segment to the rope, I make it so the crank itself turns. So it looks like it's kind of unwinding or rewinding the pulley. You don't have to do this. It's just part of what I built. Um, so you can include the rotation or exclude it. You also don't even need the circle sprite here. You can use whatever you want. Um, and for this, you won't actually see the rotation happening because the sprite is just a circle. Um, there's no, nothing in it to signify the rotation, but it will be rotating just so you know, like a pulley. Okay. So in this script, we have the rotate speed. So this is the amount that it'll rotate each time you uh, increase or decrease the rope length. We have the transform of the selected object. This is that yellow circle that I made. Um, this is how we keep track of it, just to turn it on and off when this crank has been selected. We have a reference to the rope object. We have the total number of links that are currently in the rope. And we have the maximum number of links that we want the rope to be able to have. So this just prevents the user from going crazy and making a forever long rope. So just in starting out, we find the selected object. Um, I find it based on the name. You can just drag it in in the inspector if you don't want to do it this way. And I also grab the component of the rope from the parent. Um, so as we made in the last video my dynamic rope video we made this rope and so the parent has that rope script so we grab a reference to that and then we set the number of links to whatever the number of links is in the rope just to start out so we have this rotate function that is called externally that will basically tell this crank which way to turn and whether or not it should add or remove a link from the rope so i use an int to signify the direction so a positive integer is to the right and a negative is to the left so if there's a positive direction and the rope object is not null and we haven't reached the number of maximum links yet then we will rotate this crank object in the direction so that's the positive direction times the rotate speed that we set um, above and then we will call this add link function on the rope class we haven't created this function yet i'll be making it soon with you and then we increase the number of links 
And it's pretty much the same in the opposite direction. If the direction is negative and we don't have a null rope and we have more than one link. I set one to be the minimum number of rope segments. You can make it zero if you wish. Then we will rotate the crank to the left. So that'll be a negative number times the rotate speed. And we will remove a link from the rope and decrease the number of links that we have here. Simple. Then I just have two functions here to toggle the select game object. Basically, it'll set that selected game object to active or inactive um, based on whether or not this crank specifically has been selected. Next thing we need to do is modify our rope class so that we can add and remove links. So I'm going to go into the rope script. This is the script that I made in my dynamic rope video, and I've just added some more things to it so that we can add and remove the links. So first I added this reference to um, the top of the rope, and we will keep track of which rope segment is the topmost one so that when we add ropes, it'll be adding the segments to the top of the rope, not to the bottom. So we're just going to track it by the hinge joint 2D component that is at the top. And what I've also done is in the generate rope function, I added this small condition at the bottom. So basically when it's going through and creating the rope at the beginning, the first segment that it creates, we will set that hinge joint component to be the top. Then I've added these two functions to add and remove links. So here's the add link function. First, it chooses a random number in my prefab rope segments list, and it instantiates a rope segment prefab from whichever random number that was. So this will just randomly choose um, a prefab from my list to instantiate. Then it sets the parent of this new link that we created to this rope object so it's nicely nested within the rope. And it also sets the position of that new segment to be the origin or the, the position of the parent. Then it grabs the hinge joint 2D component of that new link and it sets the connected body of that hinge joint to the hook. So since we're creating a new rope segment on the top, this is the new top of the rope and that new top has to be connected to the hook. So since we have a reference to the hook up here, we can easily create a new rope segment and attach it to that hook. Then what we do is we set the object that is connected below our new link to whatever the previous top was. So now we know that, okay, whatever was top before is now going to be below this new link. And then for the top, we set that top's connected body to be this new link. So basically we hook the top up to this new link we just created. So we grab the rigid body to set that in, in the hinge joint. Because this top is a hinge joint object, we can access its connected body and set the new link's rigid body to be the connected body of that top. And then we call this function that we have not yet written but will write soon, reset anchor. So this will basically reset the position of the anchor of the top to be wherever it needs to be to connect seamlessly to the rope segment that we just created above it. And then we set the new top to be the hinge joint that we just created. In order to remove a link from the segment, we're again removing from the top. So we have the top of the rope always stored in top. So what we could do is take the object that is connected below the top and set it to be the new top. So we reference the game object's rope segment component, and then we find what's connected below it, and then we get the hinge joint 2D component of whatever is connected below the top and set that the new top. We set the connected body of the new top to the hook, so we're basically hooking the one below the top up to the hook, and then we move the position of that new top to the same position as the hook, so it'll snap up, otherwise it'll just keep hanging where it was before. And then we reset the anchor of that new top, so it'll connect properly to the hook. And then we just destroy the previous top game object and we set the reference to the top to be this new top. So this is how we add and remove links to the top of our rope. The same thing can be done by adding and removing links to the bottom. You just have to change the references and instead of grabbing what's connected below, you would have to grab what's connected above. Okay, so I said here we have this new function in the rope segment class called reset anchor. And I will show you just how I adjusted the rope segment 
script in order to do this. Basically, in the previous version of the rope segment script, we had all of this code in the start function. Um, so basically, once this, the rope segment is created, we look for the rope segment above it, see how long it is, and move the hook of the current rope segment to be the bottom of the bounds of the segment above it. All I did was take that code and put it into a public void function, and then I called that function on start. So when the rope segment is created, it'll set the anchor, but then if we ever need to reset the anchor, we can just call this function externally, and it'll reset the anchor. And this function can handle whether or not it's a rope segment that's connected to a rope segment above it, which is this first if statement, or if it's connected directly to a hook, which is this one. Basically, it'll set the anchor to zero, or it'll set the anchor to be the bottom of the sprite above it. So that was just the simple change I needed to make in this rope segment script. So everything is pretty much done. Now we just need to add in some controls so that we can add and remove these segments of the ropes dynamically. This control functionality I usually will put in my player class. I'm going to be making a fully fledged player that can grab and swing on ropes in my next video. But for now, I'm just going to start by creating um, a player and a player script. And we'll just use that player script as the baseline for the interactive functionality of these cranks. So I'm gonna add a component player, and this is a script that I've already made. You can create a new script and we'll go through it together. Okay, so we have a reference to whichever pulley or crank has been selected, and that's all we really need up here. And then in the update function, we call check pulley inputs, which is a void function that I have made here below. The way I've done this is just from mouse click. So you click to select a pulley. First, we have to get the screen to world point of wherever the mouse was. So this checks the position in the world where you've clicked. So I get the 2D vector of that mouse position, and then I do a raycast hit 2D of that mouse position into this hit object. And basically, it just checks, you can check the collider of that hit object and see what you've clicked on basically. So because we added that circle collider 2D to the crank and we set the tag of the crank to crank, this basically just says, okay, if there is a collider that we hit and if that collider's object has a tag crank, then we know we've clicked on a crank. So the functionality I have here is basically, if you click on a pulley, it will select it. If you click on the same pulley again, it will deselect it. If you click somewhere outside of the pulley, it will deselect it. And if you have one pulley selected and click on a different pulley, it will deselect the one that was selected and select the new one. So that's what this functionality here does too. So if the pulley selected object is not what we just clicked on, that means we hit something that isn't what is selected already. And if it's not null, if we have something already selected, then we're just gonna deselect it. So this is where we get that crank component and call that deselect function that we wrote before. Then whatever we clicked on, we will set to the new pulley selected and we will do the select function of that pulley selected. Otherwise, if we clicked on the same pulley that we already selected, so the one that we already have that's selected is the one we just hit, then we will deselect it and set pulley selected to null. Otherwise, if we didn't hit any crank at all, it means we click somewhere that had no hit and we're just going to deselect the pulley. So if we have something that's already been selected, then it will just deselect that and set it back to null. So just some simple select deselect functionality. So finally, I made it so that um, F and R are the rotate buttons for the pulley. You can change this to whatever you want. So if that button is pressed and then the pulley selected is not empty so that we actually have a pulley that is selected, then we will rotate it in the positive direction for F. So going down means it's rotating down and adding a link. And if it's the key R pressed and we do have a pulley selected, then we will rotate up in the negative direction and shorten the pulley. So that's just simply where it calls the rotate functions that we created in the crank. So that's basically it. Let's see this in motion. Okay, so here's the rope that was auto-generated. And if I click on the pulley, 
you see my selected um, thing shows up, <laughs> my selected circle shows up. You could see in my player, it has a reference to the, uh, the pulley selected we just clicked, and if I click it again, it deselects it, so it turns that off. If I click it and then click outside, it deselects it, so that's good. So now I'm gonna press F to lower and see it creates a new rope segment at the top and then R to shorten it and it removes that rope segment from the top again and again. You'll see the minimum is one, it cannot go further and the maximum is 15. So there we go. Let's try with two ropes. I'm gonna take this whole rope and drag it in as a prefab. And then I'm going to make another one. And another one. And we can just have fun with a couple different rope lengths. This one can be three. And this one can be five. So I can select one pulley, I could switch to another and another, I can deselect, I can select, select. So all the selection is working nicely. And whichever one is selected, if I press F or R, I can rotate and lengthen accordingly. So there you have it. We've got our dynamically lengthened, generated, user interactable, <laughs> free range, gluten free, organic ropes. <laughs> All right, my next tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to climb and swing on these ropes as a player. So stay tuned for that. If it's already created, it'll be in the cards above. Thank you for watching, appreciate your attendance and I hope you learned something.